Good morning, good morning, everyone. Good morning to everyone. Good morning to all of you. Come on in the room. Come on in the room. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will be glad in this day. Come on in the room. Let us give the Lord our first. Let us give the Lord our best. Let us magnify him for he has done such great and marvelous things. Let us come on and praise the Lord this morning. Good morning to all of you. Good morning, Sister Sherilyn. Good morning to you, Sister Angela. Come on in the room. Let's bless the Lord this morning. It is time for us. Good morning, Sister Nicole. So good to see all of you as you're coming in the room. Be sure to greet me as you come in. Greet one another as you come into the room. Let me know that you are here. Let me know that you are ready to give the Lord what it is that he deserves and what it is that he desires on this morning. I'm telling you, the Lord is blessing us every single day. He's blessing us to do what it is he's called for us to do. He's blessing us, come on, to get up in the morning. He's blessing us to, to go about our occupations. He is blessing us, come on, to take care of our children. He's blessing us to go to school, whatever it is that we go that we set out to do. He is blessing us to do all those things. And I'm telling you, I am excited about it. Good morning to you, Sister Elise. Good morning to you, Sister Roz. Good morning, Cousin Trina. Good morning to you, Sister Tressa. Good morning to all of you. Sister Sheila, good morning to you. A good God bless you to all of you that are joining this morning. I just thank the Lord for all of you. Sister Mary, good morning to you. A blessed God for all of you this morning. I believe that the Lord has something special for us this morning. And I'm going to go before the Lord in prayer. And then we're going to get right to it. Father God, I just thank you. I bless you, Lord God, for healing today. I thank you, Lord God, for what you've already done, God, to let us know how much you love us. Lord, and we appreciate you for that, God. We, we love you so much, Lord Jesus, that you think enough about us to send us a word that's well, going to bring life into our spirits, oh Lord God. We love you, God, so much that you think enough of us, God, to send protection and healing, God, and provision, God, in our lives, Lord God, and most of all, salvation, Lord God, because without you, oh my God, our souls would be lost. We praise you, Lord God, for this word that's going to go forth this morning. And we thank you, Lord God, for how it's going to penetrate the hearts and the minds of the people of God, that they, God, will have victory in all things. We thank you, Lord God, for those that are watching all over. We thank you for those that are in California, God. We thank you for quenching the fires, oh Lord God, even for bringing the rain, Lord God. We praise your name, Lord God, for those that are in the Bahamas, for those that are in Trinidad, Lord God, for Puerto Rico. We thank you for them, Lord God, that may watch this broadcast. I pray, Lord God, that you do something special for them, Lord God. Just something, God, miraculous, Lord God, for them, that they will come to know, God, who you are in a mighty and special way. We praise you, God, for all things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Good morning to those of you I didn't greet while I was yet in prayer. I thank God for all of you this morning. This morning, I'm talking about, listen, we are under attack. We are, good morning to you, Bishop Jones. I thank you so much for joining this broadcast. I'm getting up a little bit early. I want to see what the Lord has to say from the mouth of Pastor Tina. I just bless God for you and what you continue to do for the people of God, who the Lord has entrusted you to. Brother Ronald, good morning to you. We are under attack, but I've got good news for you. The Lord is saying, you don't have to fear. You don't have to fear because the Lord, my God, is with you. There's a scripture in the word, uh, I'm going to look at a couple of things this morning because I'm telling you, I don't know about you all. Maybe it's just me. Sister Phyllis, good morning to you. Maybe it's just me. I don't know about you all, but attacks have been coming from every hand. They've been coming from absolutely everywhere. I mean, if it's not your children, if it's not your job, if it's not your spouse, if it's not projects that you've been trying to work on that's not been working for you, Brother Ulysses, good morning to you. If it's one, if it's not one thing, it's another, and you're saying, Lord, what meaneth these things? I'm just saying to us this morning, listen, we are under attack, but just because we are under attack doesn't mean that we fall down and doesn't mean that we give up. Good morning to you, Prophet Anderson. It doesn't mean that we fall down and give up. It doesn't mean, my God, that we throw in the towel. We, listen, it just simply means that we got to push harder. It just means that we've got to shift sometimes, shift our strength to another direction. We sometimes got to shift. Come on. We got to move ourselves to another place, get out of harm's way sometimes in order to do what the Lord has called for us to do. Isaiah 59, 19, let me just read this really quickly. It says, so shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. 
we 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 got to understand if the the spirit of the Lord come on shall rise the spirit of the Lord shall rise not the enemy the spirit of the Lord is going to rise against the enemy we know the enemy comes we know situations come we know we are under attack all day we know the enemy is trying to do things that keep us from reaching the destiny, the purpose that God has placed in our lives. But the spirit of the Lord is what's going to raise a standard. The spirit of the Lord is, is what's going to rise up. So we have to understand that it's time for us to rise up. The spirit of the Lord must rise up in you in order for you to deal with the attacks that are coming. Because they certainly are coming. The attacks are, they're here. It, it, I, it can't be just me. I don't believe it's just me. But this morning, I want to help us to understand that even though the attacks may come, you've got the spirit of God inside of you that's going to raise and lift up that standard against the enemy. But it's got to raise up inside of you. And you can't sit down. You can't go into a corner and hide. Come on, you can't cry a bucket of tears because the enemy, the attacks are going to come. And even though it seems that people may be leaving all around you, they're dropping. Come on, they're dropping like flies, says the Emma, all around you. The people that you thought were your friends, maybe they're not hanging out with you anymore. They're, they're saying to you, I've got to move on. They, I've got to do something else. The Lord is speaking in my spirit and telling me I have to do something else. You got to understand that the Lord is saying to you, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the word of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain. You are the one that's rising up. The enemy just is coming in. Come on, all over Puerto Rico, all over Trinidad. The enemy is just coming in like a flood. Come on, he's not drowning you. Come on, the dam is not breaking. The spirit of the Lord is what's rising up against it. It's coming up over it. You got to understand you got more power. Why? Why do we come under attack? Listen, we always talk about because the enemy, he knows what is on the horizon. Come on, good morning to you, Sister Natalie. Deacon Mary, good morning. He knows what's on the horizon. We come under attack because the enemy is trying to put his thumb on us. He's trying to suppress what the Lord has put inside of us. He's trying to keep us down. Good morning to you. Sister Lahoma, good morning to you. Sister Elise, listen, the enemy, he's trying, he knows, he doesn't know everything. But he's got an inkling. He's got an inkling of how powerful you are. He's got an inkling, my God, of what the Lord has, Lord has shown you and what the Lord has put inside of you because of the way you're moving around. He does not want, come on, your destiny to come forward. He wants to control your destiny. Come on. Your very existence is threatening the existence, the kingdom of Satan. Your very existence, you being here. That's why he doesn't want you to move forward. He doesn't want you to move ahead. Come on. you. When you are trying to get out of bondage, even as new baby saints, as you're trying to get out of bondage, the enemy is trying to, he's like crabs in a barrel. He's trying to continue to keep holding you down. Come on. There are things around you that just don't want to see you succeed. But the Lord is saying not so. And even as I talk about, you know, being a baby, when you're a baby, well, there are things that babies can't do. You know, baby can't, baby can't feed himself. Baby can't walk. Baby can't talk. And then you, as you know, as me, as my, as my, my baby, I, I said, let me give me the baby. I, I can carry the baby. I can give the baby some food. I can, I can do that. But as the baby grows, as, as I can help them to do things. But after a while, they have to learn on their own. Same with us. If, if you continued, if I continued to feed my grandbaby, continue to carry my grandbaby everywhere she went. Now, now she's three and four years old. I'm still feeding her. I'm still carrying her. Don't you know that my grandbaby would never learn how to eat on her own if I continued to talk for her? 
If I continue to do, if I continued, come on, to walk around with her, holding her, first, first of all, I would get weak, but don't you know that she would never get strong enough to stand on her own? She would never be able to walk on her own. She would never go over or be able to use her voice on her own. She would never be able to support herself if I continue to do that. Come on, don't we know that the same thing happens in the body of Christ? There comes a point in time where the Spirit of the Lord has to dwell inside of us. We have to teach one another, my God, how to use what God has given us in order to combat that the attacks of the enemy. And sometimes what we say, Sister Milo, we say, listen, I got mine and they've got to get theirs. But don't you know when you say that, you create a different atmosphere around you of weakness, I want an atmosphere around me of strength. And so therefore, I've got to be able to create the links around me that are strong. And so if I feel like, and maybe I may not feel like, but if I feel like I can help, my God, somebody else to allow that spirit of God inside of them to raise up so that they can be strengthened. Don't you know that strengthens the boundaries around me, that strengthens the borders that are around me? So that when the enemy does try to come in, don't you know that he can't break through? Oftentimes, we don't think we need one another, but I'm telling you, we do. Sometimes, my God, when, when we are under attack, one of the things that we do most often, we, re, we remove ourselves from the place of safety. When we are under attack, when things start to happen in our lives, we remove our places from the pe ourselves, from the people that are there to help us the most. We say, I've got to move on. I got to go to a different location. I got to go to a different place. When you are drawing strength from that particular place, we remove ourselves from the place that we were drawing strength, not necessarily listening to the spirit of God. But your decisions, my God, have to be based on what the Holy Spirit is telling you to do. When we are under attack, if we don't use what the Holy Spirit is giving us, my God, we will succumb to the flood that the enemy is trying to put in our way. What decisions are you making, Pastor Tina? You got to make decisions that are good for your life. Decisions that have to be based on the word of God. Decisions that are based on the principle of, of God. We, we understand that, listen, uh, Jesus himself was under attack. Jesus came under attack. I'm going to talk about it in a minute. He came under attack at one of the weakest times of his life. A lot of times, many times, the enemy will attack us when we're at our weakest, when we're at our lowest point. When we're at the lowest moment of our lives, when something happens and the enemy comes in, come on, and then he begins to put doubt in your mind. See, I told you that wasn't going to work. See, I told you if you did that, the Lord was not going to be with you. I told you this and that was going to happen. But don't you know, you cannot listen to that voice of negativity. Because anytime you begin to listen to that voice and not listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit, particularly when you're under attack, you're going to have some issues. You're going to have some problems. And when the, and when the voice starts speaking to you, words that are not the word of God, my God, something that is not, uh, not in, um, in agreement with the biblical principles of God, you got to know there's going to be some problems. There are going to be some problems and there are going to be some issues. We've got to hear from God. We've got to hear from him. And when we hear from him, I'm telling you, the Lord is going to do what it is that we, we want him to do. We are under attack. But I want to say to you this morning, you cannot fear. Even as the, you know, the Israelites were walking through their wilderness period, they were under attack. The devil, he kept putting things in their mind, kept telling them, listen, your God is not going to save you. Come on, get another God. Kept telling them things. But what do you do when you're under attack? What do you do? Do you go off and retreat somewhere? Come on, the thing that has been holding you, sometimes I recognize there are some, there are some shifting that you need to do. There are some adjustments that you need to make because past things sometimes can't take you into the future. But a shifting, my God, doesn't mean a complete um, disruption of what's going on in your life. I want to look at this morning at Matthew chapter 4. I'm going to look at verses 1 through 11. Because we understand even as Jesus was under attack. And sometimes we say, uh, when we are weak, the devil trying to mess your mind. Yes, he does. He does when you are weak at your weakest moment. And many, I'm telling you, 
I feel it in the spirit. Many of us, we're going to church, we're sitting in the church pews, but yet we're weak. We're allowing the enemy to speak to us. We're under attack. The thing that you have put in your mind earlier in January of 2019, you're saying it hasn't happened yet. The thing hasn't done. You feel that, the, that God is doing something, but it just hasn't occurred yet. And so doubt now begins to creep into your mind, creep into your heart. Now, let me get to Matthew chapter 4. This is the pastor's scripture, my God. Yeah, that's right. Spiritual warfare is within us, Brother Ron. Walk in the spirit. Get out of your head. That's right. We've got to walk in the spirit. The, the Bible says, thank you for that. Because the Bible says in Matthew chapter 4, it says that the Jesus was led up of the spirit. You knew exactly where I was going with this. He was led up in the, of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Didn't say he just walked up there by himself. He didn't go alone. He knew that when he went, because he was at his weakest point, he had to go to a place where he had some help. When we are at our weakest point, I'm telling you, sometimes we retreat to a place where we have no help. We leave our churches. We leave the, the care and concern of our pastors. We leave our brothers and sisters. But the Bible says when Jesus went into the wilderness, he went with the spirit. And when he fasted 40 days and 40 nights, after that he was hungry, he fasted. Why is that? He fasted, he shed it off that fleshly thing so that he could get more into the spirit of God. We have weapons, people of God, weapons of fasting. That we can be more in tune with what the Lord would have for us to know and to do. Then, my God, then we can shed off the thing that we thought. We can shed off our mind, shed off our thoughts. People of God, we're under attack. This thing is serious. And when the enemy is looking at us, he's saying, oh, they don't even know. They don't even know what I'm getting ready to do because they're so full of themselves. Come on, they're so haughty. They're so prideful. They, they don't even get what I'm getting ready to do. But the Bible says, listen, when the tempter came, he said, if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. He answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. You all know this passage, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And then the devil took him up to a holy city and set him on a pinnacle of the temple. And he said to him, if thou be the son of God, cast yourself down for it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee in the hands shall they bear thee up lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus said to him, it is written again, Satan, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And again, the devil took him up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them as if Jesus didn't see them before, hadn't seen them before. And they said unto him, all these things I will give thee if thou will fall down and worship me. And then said Jesus unto him, get thee behind me. Get thee hence, Satan. Mourn to you, says Jackie, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thou serve. Number 11 says this, Then the devil leaveth him, the devil left him. And behold, the angels came and ministered to him. First thing we need to see here is that Jesus himself, Jesus, Jesus was coming from a high spiritual point. And sometimes we get to a point where we're running, we're running hard. When we run a hundred miles an hour, come on, he had, he had just been baptized and, and during the baptism of his Holy Spirit, he had descended upon him like a dove. Jesus or God had expressed his pleasure in his beloved son. And now we're seeing Jesus' faith being put to a test, just like yours. Many times we go through situations and we're riding high. We're excited about what has been happening in our lives. And then all of a sudden, our faith is put to a test. And we have to find, we find ourselves in our own experience, just like Jesus found himself. Listen, if the, if the devil tempts Jesus and he is the son of God, he is God. What more do you think he's going to try to tempt us? What more do you think he's going to try to test us? What more do you think that he's going to attack us? He thinks we're a pushover compared to Jesus. But we oftentimes find 
our faith under attack. We find the very, our very core of our Christianity under attack. But Jesus himself was led to that place of testing by the Holy Spirit. But he went with the Spirit. You have to go with the Spirit. You have to go with the Spirit. Because God uses these trials. He uses these temptations to, to not destroy us but to refine and define our character and allow our strength, our, our faith to be strengthened. He allows that to be strengthened. I go back to the child. If, if you never allow that child to walk, you never allow them to use their own voice to talk. They will be weak, but he uses that to strengthen our character, to define our faith. But in this case, my God, Satan went straight he went straight for the juggler. And that's what he does for us. He goes straight for the juggler because he knows, my God, that sometimes as Christians, as children of God, we'll fold easily. We are under attack. Because the devil said to, to, to Jesus, if you are the son of God, come on, change these stones into loaves of bread. The devil sometimes will look at your condition. Look at you being hungry or look at you being without money or, or look at you being without friends. Look at you being lonely. And he will take those things, my God, and he'll try to make, turn those things against you. To turn them, to turn you against the God that you serve. Jesus himself here, my God. He was lonely. He was weary. He was tired. He was hungry. He was hungry. Yet the devil says, if you are the son of God, there was no question about that. And many times, my God, we allow people to question who we are. When we, if, if somebody say to me, if you are Tina Patton, that's not a question to me. I know that my name is Tina Patton. I don't even have to look at my birth certificate, although I know that's on there, but I, my marriage certificate, I know that my name is Tina Patton. But oftentimes we allow people to say things to us to get us, move us out of who we know that we are. Jesus knew who he was. He, I am a son of God. I don't even have to entertain that question. But we entertain sometimes things, my God, when we shouldn't. And that allows the enemy a foothold into who we are. Don't allow the enemy any opportunity to try to make you think that you're somebody that you're not. The enemy says, if you are the son of God, when somebody, he might say, if you believe in God, if, if you think your God will do no, not if I think I know it, we are under attack. The enemy is trying to make us believe something that is not true because why? Because he is a liar and the truth is not in him. He is a father of lies. We have to make sure that we are listening to the Holy spirit. Because Jesus combats the attacks of the enemy just like we need to. So when, when temptation comes, listen, your defense is the word of God. Just like Jesus stood his ground, you've got to stand on the word of God. How do I do that though? you got to become acquainted with the scriptures of God. When the attack comes, it's not for you to fall away or fall back or retreat from the church or retreat from the pastors or retreat from the people of God, retreat from your brothers and your sisters. That's not time to do that. It's time for you to get deeper in, to get more involved, to get more acquainted with the scripture because the scripture has become a part of who you are. You know the scripture. David says, thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you, that also so when the enemy comes in, come on, the, the, the spirit of the Lord will rise up. The word of God will rise up against him. If I don't have the word of God hidden down in my heart, it's going to be difficult for that thing to rise up when the enemy comes, when the attack comes. I said when, not if, the attack will come. It's coming. But you've got to have that word of God in your heart. Whatever that word is, you got to get it. If you got to get it on your uh, mobile device, if you got to listen, if you got to sing the word of God, whatever it is, you got to get that word of God down in you so that when the enemy comes, it's like Jesus, you're able to stand your ground and you ever say, look, you may have said this one thing, devil, but I believe my God, that my God has given me victory even over what you have said. Devil took him to a high place. Highest, he said, if you are the son of God, he keeps saying this, if you are the son of God, 
There is no question. If you are a child of God, there is no question. The attacks are going to come. Your character, my God, is going to be attacked. But you've got to know who you are. The devil says, if you are, if you are the son of God, jump off. For he said, he orders his angels to protect you and they will hold you with their hands and keep you from striking your foot on a stone. Listen, Satan always does. He may say a little bit of the word, but it's not going to, he can't speak the truth. Remember, he cannot speak the truth. Satan comes to try to confuse. And when there is confusion, you know God is not the author of confusion. You know that Satan is. When there is confusion in your life, you got to know that Satan is somewhere nearby. When the confusion comes, you got to know that Satan is somewhere nearby. And so therefore, you got to go to your secret closet. And you got to pray that the Spirit of the Lord come on, comes and dwells with you. Because he is not, God is not the author of confusion. So it is important, come on, that we test the spirit by the word of God. Whatever challenge, whatever attack is thrown up you, come on, it's got to line up with the rest of the scripture. If it's contrary to God, if it's contrary to the nature of God, come on, if you believe that something is telling you to you know, not love someone or not deal with someone or, or come on, or lie about something or deceive someone in regard to something, you know that that is not the spirit of God. These attacks are coming. They're coming hard and they're coming heavy. Even when, when the devil took Jesus up to the very high mountain, he said, listen, he, I, I, here, look, look at all this, Jesus. I'm going to give all of this to you if you'll kneel down and worship me. And how many of us know people, even in our own circles, that have forsaken the things of God for the things of the world? Who believe, my God, that God, the spirit of God, the power of God, the teachings of God are no longer relevant because they've gone to the ways of the world. Satan, come on. He desires the glory that God has. And matter of fact, Satan wants everything. Satan wants to be like God. And he promises things. My God, he's promised people things. But don't you know he cannot promise them salvation? Don't you know that the end of what Satan gives is destruction? We are under attack, but I'm telling you, we cannot give in to that. We cannot give in to the attack because we understand, just like John 10, 10 says, that Satan comes to kill, steal, and to destroy. Come on, Satan does not come to bring prosperity. He does not come to bring you truth. Satan does not come to bring uh, uh, um, healing. He does not come to unify. He does not come to bless. And what you got to say is, Satan, get behind me. Come on, resist the enemy. You got to resist him and he will flee. That is one thing I want to bring out here today. When you are under attack, you cannot give in to the attack. You got to use the word of God to resist anything that the enemy is trying to do in your life. Because I'm telling you, the Lord has promised you such great and mighty things. And as you begin to shift from where, my God, you, the Lord was speaking to me even on last night. And, and when he was speaking, he was saying, whoa, where are you going? You've got to get back in your lane. Get back into the place where I called you to be. He says, I, you are a good man. I'm ordering your steps. But for some reason, you've gotten off focus. You've gotten off track. I need you to come back. Whoa, W-H-O-A. Get back into the place where I need for you to be. Come on, as we get to the end of this scripture, you've got to resist the devil. Resist those attacks. Whatever he's trying to do, come on, you can never yield to the authority of Satan. The Lord Jesus Christ, he lives in you and you have the authority of Jesus. Come on, you have it. You have the power of death and life in your tongue. And sometimes we forget to tell Satan to get out of my face, get behind me, leave me. We forget to tell him that because sometimes some of the things that he shows us, they things that they look good to us. There's things that are common to us, things that are comfortable to us, things that we've been doing in our past that maybe we think is not going to harm us in it. We just dibble and dabble a little bit. But listen, we've got to remember to use our voice and use our mouth to tell Satan just to, you got to get behind me because even you think you doing me some good. How, you don't even think you're doing me no good. You understand you've come in to destroy me. You're coming to pull the destiny out of me that God has for me. But this morning, Satan, I got news for you. Come on, I'm telling you, you've got to get out of my life. Listen, 
fire and brimstone may seem like it's falling down all around me. It seems like maybe things are not working for me, not working on my behalf. But I'm telling you, I've got the victory through Jesus Christ. Satan, this morning, I've got to tell you to go. You've got to leave. I'm going to resist every attack that you're trying to put in my life, every attack on my children, every attack on my spouse, every attack in my job, every attack on my relationship, and sure enough, every attack on my finances. You shall not. Listen, my money is marked. It is marked for greatness. It is marked for blessings. It is marked for blessing somebody else, and it shall accomplish what it has been marked for. Come on, you got to resist the enemy, and he will flee. How do you resist him? You got to resist him in prayer. You got to resist him in reading the word of God. You got to resist him because you got to rebuke everything that the enemy is trying to do in your life. Because the last thing that you see in the word of God here in, in verse number 11, that the angels came to minister to the Lord. They came to take care of the Lord. The Lord will care for you. Even as you are under attack, you may take some blows. Listen, the arrow may hit you, but I'm telling you, if you can stand firm, if you can resist the enemy, come on, if you will not give in to him, the Lord will send angels, my God, to care for you. He will send angels, my God, to stand watch, to stand guard for you. Even in the face of situations, even in the face of struggles, even in the face of trials, my God, we may, God, God get a little frustrated, but you should not get discouraged. The Bible says, listen, we will not be utterly cast down, even as you may be perplexed about a situation. Come on, it will not overtake you. You will not be overcome by the attacks of the enemy, because as we understand, there is no weapon that is formed against you that shall prosper. Not one of them. Come on, you've got to rise above, like the Spirit of the Lord. You've got to rise, because the Spirit of God is deep inside of you. And as that, come on, as the enemy comes in, as the attack comes in, be steadfast. Stand your ground. And let the Spirit of the Lord raise up, rise up in you. The attack may be great. The attack may come. But just like when the devil attacked Jesus, he had to be sent, the devil had to be sent packing. Come on, he's got to pack his bag that he's got to leave because the Lord has a destiny for you. That's your destiny. Your destiny is righteousness. Your destiny is victory. Your destiny is prosperity. Your destiny is restoration. Your destiny is reconciliation. Your destiny is wealth. Your destiny is wisdom. Your destiny, my God, it's everything that the Lord has said for you. There is no promise that is above what God has promised to you. Everything he said you can have, you can have. And everything he said you can do, you can do. And absolutely everything he said you can be, you can be. The attack may be great, but you don't have to fear. We win. Father God, I just thank you, Lord God. I bless you. Lord God, for who you are. I thank you, Lord God, for creating tenacity in us. I thank you for creating strength in us. And Lord, I thank you, God, that I don't have to do this thing by myself. Lord, if I find some strength, oh God, if I, if I find some courage, Lord, if I find confidence, Lord, I thank you, Lord God, that I'm going to help my brother or my sister because I need to build a fence, Lord, around me, Lord God, a fence, Lord God, of those, God, who have the same strength, the same courage, the same, God, tenacity that we have. I thank you, Lord God, that the enemy cannot harm. He cannot penetrate, God, what you have created. And I thank you, Lord God, that as the Spirit of the Lord raises up in us, the attacks, Lord God, they will become less and less, oh Lord God. We will mitigate, Lord God, the attempts that the, the Satan tries to do to get us off focus. Lord, we will move back into the lane that you call for us to be. God, return us to the positions that we once had, Lord God, the positions of safety, Lord God, the positions, God, of protection, Lord God. And when we got out of the way, we moved away from where you had for us to be, Lord God. We ask that you forgive us for that. Return us, God, back. God, we will have the authority that we've always had. That when we say a thing, when we speak a thing, Lord, it shall come to pass, Lord God. And when the enemy comes in our lives, oh Lord God, we are able to rebuke every attack of the enemy, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that there is, God, no weapon that has been formed that shall prosper against us, Lord God. 
Lord, even though the attacks may be great, I thank you, Lord, that your power is greater. Thank you for victory now in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. We shall not move to the left. We shall not move to the right, but we shall stand firm, Lord. We shall stand our ground with the spirit of the Lord, which is the word of God, the truth of God. We shall send the enemy packing, not just today, but every day he tries to rear his ugly head. We thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing in our lives right now, the people of God. We thank you for what you're doing in their lives, O oh Lord God. Even those, my God, that, that claim illnesses, O oh Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, that you, God, can heal them. There is nothing that is too hard for you, Lord God, not cancer, Lord God, not diabetes, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that you, God, have the disease, Lord God, and you've already healed us. And so I thank you, Lord God, that we have the faith to believe that we can walk in our healing, Lord, while we shall do it. In the mighty name of Jesus, I bless your name, Lord God. I bless you, God. For how you're going to bring the people of God out. You are bringing us out. You're bringing us up. And you're bringing us out, Lord God. Lord, Lord we, we, we want to smile again, Lord God. We want to, God, we want to be excited again. We want to be excited, Lord God. Not because the enemy, God, has his hand on us, Lord God. But because you have your hand on us. I want to be excited, God, today. For what you're doing in our lives. And what you continue to do, Lord God. Continue to bless us. Continue to heal us, Lord God. Continue to set us free from sin, from sickness, from poverty, Lord, and from an early spiritual death. For that, Lord God, we will give you praise and glory in the mighty name of Jesus. We do pray. Amen. Amen, people of God. Listen, I love you all so much with the love of Jesus. You continue to stay tuned. God is doing something mighty special um, with this broadcast. He's doing something mighty special with each one of you. And I love to hear your praise reports. I love to hear your testimonies in regard to what the Lord is doing. And I just pray that you all will continue to pray for me. The Lord continues to strengthen me to do what he's called for me to do. Hey, I'm just his mouthpiece. Ah, my God, I thank the Lord just for being his mouthpiece. And I just pray that you, again, just continue to keep me lifted up. My God, the Spirit of the Lord will continue to flow through me. Yes, I love you all so much. You all have a wonderful day. You go in peace.